Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And the first thing I'm going to say is just a thank you to the Honourable Member for South, Wend South End West, who made a lovely tribute to her predecessor, who will be very, very proud of the <coughs> remarks that she made. Uh, I'm here today not only on behalf of the numerous consistent constituents who have emailed me regarding live exports all across North Norfolk, but because this is also a matter that I am passionate about personally. And I've spoken in this place on animal welfare matters time and time again on my social media many, many times about the importance of respecting, caring for and looking after animals of all shapes and sizes, right down to the very tiniest. As members will know, I am also the UK glowworm champion, which always gets a slight chuckle in here. And of course, you will remember back in October my record-breaking dark skies debate on uh, glowworms that uh, inhabit my, my constituency in Sheringham Park. But of course, on a serious matter, we must put animal welfare at the forefront of all the spheres of our decision making. And I'm really proud that this Conservative government is doing that time and time again. Now, as the Minister will know, uh, livestock farming and particularly pigs and cattle, is a crucial part of my North Norfolk agricultural market. I've been to see him enough times about it over the years. And locally, we ensure that very, very hard that uh, animal welfare is maintained. Norfolk produces 6% of England's livestock output, totalling just under £600 million. And with that economic backdrop in mind, I'm a firm believer that the, this bill, when enacted, will bring substantial advantages to our local farmers in North Norfolk, as well as agricultural heartlands, as we've heard all across the House this evening. Not just economically, but also by enhancing our local farmers' capabilities to produce high-quality local food. Now, in North Norfolk, we go to extraordinary lengths to look after animal welfare. And I can remember last summer going and visiting the Patterson Farm uh, at Worcester in the wilds of North Norfolk and seeing uh, the Wagyu herd. I didn't even know what that was back at the time. But as I walked into the calving shed, uh, there was spa music, relaxing Zen spa music playing in the calving uh, shed, to which I said, is that for the farmhands? No, it is not. That was to keep the calves and the, and the birthing herds uh, calm, so that they were relaxed, and so that in turn all those animals were looked after, and of course then the meat was less stressed as well. So I mean, taking animal welfare to the absolute, absolute limit. I don't suggest every farmer starts to imp implement uh, PA systems into their calving sheds, but it just shows the level of care and welfare that my farmers take over their herds. But this bill is not just supported by my constituents, it's also supported by industry representatives all across Norfolk and the UK more widely. So although it is great that we will no longer see the fattening and slaughter of animals trans transported over uh, a seas, and that will be outlawed, it's great that we haven't seen that since 2021. Um, it is important that we get on and pass this legislation swiftly through Parliament and put it permanently into practice. And I'm going to have particular pride when residents come up to me and say, well, name me a benefit of Brexit, that I can now turn around and say there is yet another one, there is another one, that this legislation is only possible, only possible, because we have been able to take control and sovereignty of our lawmaking and do away with that decision-making of being bound by the European Union on their animal transport laws that we have been able to put this into power. No animal, Mrs Deputy Speaker, should be reared for slaughter and suffer in this way. We have changed track and we have been able to do that by leaving the European Union and now continue our world-leading status on animal welfare. Yeah.